Yeah, there is another way we could do this in the future. What's that? We run it out of this into the into this. And have this plugged into a different PC that does the actual streaming. Yeah. YouTube says it's receiving my content. It looked like pretty smooth when I was viewing it, but it says I'm live. Hey YouTube. I'm the disembodied voice of Josh. <laughs> there he is. Okay. Yeah, you were online. Is your back? Yes, yeah. seems like. I've got Josh here, off to the side. Yes. Uh, he's got to appear in every stream. It's a roll. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> Has anyone spotted me? I'm like the predator in the background. I'm dressed completely in green. Not like the predator. He didn't wear green. Okay. Like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention Kermit. It's not easy being green. <laughs> okay. I think I know what the problem was. So I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, especially in hit film, and I like having things make, uh, being, being able to do them really quickly with the keyboard. So we're using XSplit to uh, live stream this whole thing. And I set the keyboard shortcut for send it up to YouTube to control R, which in hit film is reset. Technically, XSplit shouldn't accept the keyboard shortcut if I do it in another program, but apparently it has because every time I reset something in hit film, XSplit stops the YouTube uh, upload. Right, so where was I? Don't use the slider because it's too sensitive. Yes. Um, yeah, I would either type it in or drag the number itself. Cool, three times a charm, right? Let's uh, take a look at, just making sure everything is working live. Yes, okay. What is VFX? That's a, a broad question. I'll take a, a couple hours to answer that one. There's always OBS Studio. No, it's my fault, technically. This, this is my fault. Um, I set the keyboard shortcut to control R. It's not an XSplit thing. Um, I set it because R for record, but apparently it's uh, not good to do it across programs. Okay. So let's see. Disaster. All right. I'm going to go over the seed property again because I'm not sure if that uh, got through. I might have been offline. So I'll just do it in like 20 seconds. So every time you create a new particle simulator, it generates the simulation. Um, the seed is changing the simulation, but it doesn't change anything else about it besides how the particles are generated. So if I change the seed here, you can see that it still has the same amount of particles per second, has the same appearance, all that stuff. Um, it just changes the instance of where the particles themselves are being uh, generated. So if you if you have multiple simulations, you're going to want to change the seed on each of them so that they all don't uh, spawn in the same place. So that's general. Um, and now I'll go ahead and move on to appearance. So appearance is pretty straightforward. This is where you select your texture source, um, where you determine the look of the particles and everything. So I won't go through every single one, but I will show you um, billboard and align to motion because those are very useful. So if I select a texture like fluffy cloud and I rotate around the simulation, if you don't know what billboarding is, it might not look strange at all. Um, but what billboard does is it makes, that the part it makes the particles always face the camera. So if I turn it off and then I continue to rotate the camera, you can see at some point the particles become flat and obviously 2D. If, if you're going for that, that's, you know, you can turn off billboard and leave it as that. If you don't want that, you would check mark billboard and now you can see that the particles are always facing the camera. Um, this is something that video games do as well. If you notice when you're walking through, if there's some sort of atmospherics, the particles are always facing you, the player. I noticed that when I was playing um, Bioshock Infinite the other day, the clouds in um, Columbia were billboarded. The next thing is align to motion. So this one, it would be better demonstrated if I had a waterfall, which I do. And then if I set the texture source to 
the rain. Rain streak. So this is what the simulation looks like uh, before the rain streaks, just so that you can see the direction that it's moving. And then if I set that to rain streak, it kind of falls apart as a simulation because the textures just don't align with what they're actually doing. But if you select a line to motion, the particles will then have an actual direction that they're going. Uh, and they will turn themselves automatically towards the direction that they're moving. So that, that one's useful um, depending on the texture that you're using. Let's see. I've been neglecting the questions because I my stream crashed three times. So let's go ahead and just check. Um, let's see. How might one go about creating a sort of tornado vortex with the particle simulator? So there is a tornado effect uh, in HitFilm. You just drag it down, and then it has a sort of spinning motion like that. Um, so that is a preset. So it still has all the power of the particle simulator. You can go in and make tweaks if you want, see how it's actually built. Um, so you can see there's two particle systems, uh, and then you can see, you know, it's a point, it's a cone. You can see how it's built. You can de deconstruct it for yourself. Um, so that is where I would start because getting the movement of a tornado can be difficult if you have to set it up yourself. Cool. Um, so let's see, let me delete that and go back to a regular simulation. And we'll go back into the appearance. Cool, was there anything else? Yes, there was. So let me increase the life on these real quick. This next um, step is something that I do with every single simulation that I run. I haven't yet encountered a scenario where I don't do this. So you'll notice, actually, that would make more sense if I do three. So you notice how the particles are sort of popping in and out. And I cover this in basically every single tutorial that I make that has particles. Um, because, again, I haven't come across a scenario where I don't do it. Maybe if you're making it in, in like an 8-bit video game, that would make sense for the particles to pop in and out. Uh, but for the most part, I don't want that. I want them to fade. Um, so you can see they're just kind of popping in and out. They don't really fade at all. Um, and that's just the default. So to fix that, what we're going to do is go and select the particle system and then come up to the lifetime panel. The lifetime panel represents the birth and death of every single individual particle in your simulation. So let me get a little bit farther and then I'll come back and explain it. If I select alpha, that is the opacity of each particle. And then down here I can come into type and change that to gradient. The left side of the bar represents the beginning of the particle, so the birth, and the right side represents its death, which is when it ends. And in this case, since I've selected alpha, um, the transparency is what I have control over. So if I add a black point at the beginning and end, that means when a particle is born, it will be uh, completely transparent because that's what black represents. In the middle of its life, it will be white, which is completely opaque. And at the end, it will go back to um, transparent. And what that does is, turn off the grid, it makes the particles fade in and out in a much smoother way, much more natural and much more realistic. So that is something that I haven't yet not done in a simulation, uh, but depends on what you're trying to make. Cool, so I think that's it for appearance. I'm going to go ahead and move on to movement. Well, actually, there's not a lot in movement that I have to cover. It's, it, this is where you make the decision of how they, um, how they move, how fast they are, how big, which is the scale, the life, which is how long they last. Um, the thing I kind of want to mention is the variation. So these two appearance and movement variation categories are based on what you set in appearance and movement. So to put that as an example, if I go into movement and set the life to five seconds, the particle, all the particles are going to last for five seconds. Now, if I come down to movement variation, the life is currently set to zero. So they're all going to be five seconds because that's what I set. If I set the life under the movement variation to two, that means that the particles can last anywhere from three seconds to seven seconds. Um, the variation is per particle. 
So if I set that to five seconds, it's kind of a, a, an add and subtract to whatever you set in the movement. So if this is five, and then the variation is also five, the particles can be zero seconds long, so they just could die right away, or they can be a full 10 seconds long. So the variation is something very important to set so that you get a bit of um, difference in the way your particles behave. It's already been 30 minutes. Oh my, all right. <laughs> Let's see. Make sure I'm on track here. Uh, cool. Appearance variation is slightly different, um, but it is an important thing to set. If I select a built-in texture, energy cloud, no, fluffy cloud is what I wanted, that one. So you can see that all the particles are the same, facing the same direction. They're not all the same size because I changed, oh no, I didn't. Let me just do that too. Appearance variation. So texture angle is self-explanatory, the angle of the texture. So if I increase that, you'll see that the particles start to be uh, facing different directions. If I increase the texture angle per second, that is how much they spin. So if I increase that, you'll see the particles are now spinning throughout their life. And that's one that I change all the time because typically you don't want the particle to be facing one direction the entire time. It's going to have some spin on it. Cool. Um, other miscellaneous tips. So time shift is another one. If I come and bring my CTI or playhead to the beginning, you'll notice that there are no particles on the screen. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want the particles to already be there when the shot starts. And to do that, you adjust the time shift. So if I come up to general, time shift, it's currently set to zero. If I set it to negative five seconds, that means at the beginning of the timeline, the particles will already be five seconds into the simulation. So that's something, uh, dependent on the shot, uh, useful to know. Another thing is to use presets because you can make presets out of simulations. So if I right click the simulator and select create 3D preset. I can say fluffy cloud, and then it will be in the effects panel. So if I delete just that simulation, I can just drag the fluffy cloud down into the timeline. There it is. I don't have to set the alpha. I don't have to set the texture. I don't have to set the rotation. And that just saves a bit of time um, every time you want to make a simulation. In the description of this video, I do have a link to 10 particle presets. So that is the zip folder. Um, and this is what they are. So these are uh, particle simulations that they're very simple. They're not like any uh, some sort of complex like fire or water or anything like that. They're just setups to make things slight that much faster. So let me just delete that one. And my mouse is not behaving there. Um, so if I have like drifting cube, that just kind of gives you a starting point. You don't have to set the trajectory or the sp or the how big the cube is or anything like that. Also have exploding circle. So if you want to make something is kind of like a, a ripple. There's also let's see slow moving cube, which is kind of like if you were standing in a wheat field or something. I don't even know. I just made it. Then there's also like waterfall. So again, these are things just to save you time. You don't have to set them up. Um, if you know what you want to what, what what you want to create, these can sometimes provide a starting point. Cool. It is so difficult to read the comments and keep talking at the same time. Um, is HitFilm Express with all add-ons the same as HitFilm Pro? No, there are a couple differences between Pro and a fully loaded Express. We don't ever recommend you buy all the add-ons for Express because A, you'll spend more money than just buying Pro outright, and B, Pro does have some uh, effects and, and features that are only Pro. So like Interglow, 16-bit um, color, the ability to use OpenFX plugins. Um, so there are a few things that you, you can't get in Express add-ons. Let's see. Cool. So just one or, one or two more tips, and then that is pretty much it. And then I'll also I'll send out the voucher code, or I'll put it on screen so you guys can see it. Let's see. Cool. When you're doing particle simulations, don't forget to turn on motion blur. 
Um, it's something that a lot of people forget because they're so focused on the simulation itself. But if something is moving quickly in your scene, it should blur, basically. And there are extenuating circumstances, but the motion blur button is right here. So it has, um, it's a ball that is being blurred. Um, in this case, it doesn't help too much, but when you have a full simulation that is like fire or something, it really makes a big difference in the realism uh, of the effect itself. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's all the tips I had. We are at 30 minutes, so I'm actually going to go ahead and sign off for now. I'm very sorry about the um, keyboard shortcut mess ups when I accidentally knocked the stream, stream offline, what was it, two, three times? My bad. Uh, that won't happen next time, so hopefully I'll have that uh, figured out. But yeah, thank you guys for joining. Um, before I leave, here is the voucher code because I'm going to forget. One second, let me throw it on screen. So if you go to the FX Home store, fxhome.com slash store, and you add the 3D particles pack to your cart, and then you'll be able to use that code, which is 3D particles 2305.19, it's today's date. Um, you'll get 50% off the 3D particles pack. It doesn't work for anything else, just the particles pack. Um, but yeah, let me guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Just feel free to send any stuff you make with the Particle Simulator or HitFilm in general because we do enjoy seeing all the stuff you guys make and we share it around the office and then we sometimes promote it on social as well. But yeah, thank you for coming. Um, sorry about the mess ups one more time. Uh, it's, it's, you know, growing pains, but um, thank you. Yeah, that's pretty much it for me. So be sure to subscribe for more HitFilm tutorials and I will see you guys in the next video.